Okay, hey guys, uh, welcome to week 42 on the UnderwaterRealm.com. This week we have launched our Kickstarter campaign, um, and there's a whole load of great stuff going on there. Take a look through. But this week's blog, we're actually going to be telling you how you can make your own very, very cheap Kinoflow equivalents. Um, so we're going down to the local hardware store, and you can follow and go to Bean Key or Home Depot or whatever it is by you, and follow along with the plans. You can make your own set of soft fluorescent lights for less than $100. Ballast right there. That's what we need. Ballast, starter unit, tube, mount. Plenty of holes for bracketing them all together. Okay. These are good, but because they don't advertise, let's see who we've got. 3350 lumens. They're warm white, they're not listing a actual colour balance, an actual um, Kelvin scale temperature, and it doesn't have a CRI, which means that they don't care about how much green is in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to try a lighting shop, a pro lighting shop, and see if they've got some photographic daylight bulbs for artists. Yeah, yeah, I'll do you a good deal on those. Thank you. I'll do those for the same price as an ordinary white tube at 550. I do. Thanks a lot. Just so that it helps you a lot there. Do you want to shoot this day? And obviously, want to hang around a little bit to soak up that and deal with it. It's called Happy New Year, and we wanted to. We're just going to pick up some cable um, and some screws and that sort of thing just to bolt it all together and maybe like a handle or something so we can hold and position it. Okay, we've got our four fluorescent lighting fitments back. Uh, we've got three of them here, got one of them set up. We've just been down to the lighting store and picked up these. These are much higher CRI, which stands for Color Rendering Index, which is basically talking about how accurate that white light is. Um, now, that's separate to color temperature as well. They're, they're two different things. Color temperature is effectively your red versus your blue, and your CRI is more or less, it can be summed up as how much green works its way in there as well. It should be balanced, but sometimes it's too much green or too little green. So what we've got, we've got three wooden battens here, and we've got the other three strip lights. So what we're going to do is we're going to put all of these together on here. And we are going to... Oh, the problem with fluorescent lights is that they're very fragile. Um, hopefully they're okay. We're going to bolt all four of those together. And we've got a couple of these little handles from the hardware store. We're going to bolt them on the back so that we can move them around. Right, these are 36 inches long, which makes it really nice and easy. So we're going to cut them into three lengths of one foot. I warn you now, I'm terrible at cutting in straight lines, but in the interests of speed and the internet, I don't want to waste your time. Three one foot long pieces of wood. See how many mistakes I make doing them in such a hurry for the tutorial. As you break the light apart, you've got different components. Obviously, we've got power cables running the length, and we've got the sockets that the bulb itself sits in. The large element here, this is the ballast. This is where the power goes in and then gets regulated out to the bulb, and this is the starter. So this comes out, this is replaceable, these go after a while and they take a while to fire up. But you can access that through the cove in here. So they're very, very easy to replace. Ballast, not so much so, but they, as they age, actually, you, as you can hear me, you can probably hear a nasty buzzing sound. That's actually, ironically, this six-footer up there. Um, fluorescent light is inherently a bit crap, um, which is why we make the LED ones, but this is um, it's a good quick solution to a lighting problem. Okay, because we've got quite fat screws um, to go into this wood, so we don't split the wood, we're just going to stick some pilot holes in just to clear a little bit of that wood away so we're not putting as much strain.
we're just going to start popping the screws in and putting this piece together. Now obviously I am completely rushing this job for the sake of the tutorial. You want to take as much time as you can afford to measure everything up and to make sure that everything is in exactly the right place. And always before you do this section, before you start putting everything together, you've got to think about how you're going to get power in and how you're going to distribute it. Now we're going to wire these together in parallel so that if one of them goes down that you know the others can keep functioning. Um, and so what that means is you can see here just before the power gets distributed through the starter and into the ballast here we've got a little bit of chocolate block or a little junction box here which is very very simple it's just got earth it's <laughs> neutral earth and live um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to bring the power in through one of these holes you know bring the mains power in and whack it straight into the chocolate block but then we're going to have it coming back out the same side of the chocolate block and daisy chaining along here so if one of these goes down there is still a live terminal of metal and power can still get to all of the bulbs. Okay, so we've got all of those screwed together. Um, electrical cable and plug socket. Just going to pop this on the end. Okay, the important thing to think about when you're choosing your plug, your fuse, your wiring is the wattage that it's going to draw. Now, obviously, with this system, a four foot tube, a standard fluorescent tube, is 36 watts. Um, we're going to round that up, we're going to say that's roughly 40 watts, um, which means that we're going to be talking about 120, no, 160 watts uh, across the entire system. So, very, very straightforward maths. Depends on the, the power supply in your country, um, but for example, I'm going to do some Ohm's law here. VIR dictates that if we are on, we've just got an app on the iPhone here, if we're on 240 volts, which we are here in the UK, um, and we are running 160 watts that we are drawing a current of less than 1 amp, 0.6 of an amp. So absolutely fine, but just be aware of that as you're you know, kind of racking this system up further that you could draw too much current for an individual wire or for the fuse in your plug. Very, very quick lesson in uh, very basic electronics there, but just do be aware of it. Um, it becomes an issue, especially when we're working with DC. Um, because all of our LED lights that we've manufactured are direct current, they're therefore much lower voltage and as a result much higher current for the same output. Which means that we need to think about how thick those cables are. You know like in a car um, where the lead's running from a car battery, although it's only 12 volts, the cables are much much thicker and that's because 12 volts to deliver the same power as 240 requires 20 times as much current. I'm not going to teach you how to wire up a plug because frankly if you don't know how to wire up a plug you shouldn't be doing it. One thing to remember when doing this is uh, just in the interest of saving time a motto of my dad's is a good stripper makes any job easier, so make sure you've got something that's sharp. I think that's what he meant. Okay, so this last bit we're doing now is we've done all the lives, we've done all the neutrals, we're now doing the earth. Um, effectively what that's doing is just connecting the earth in the, the house socket to the metal of all of this framework. Very, very important step. It will work without it, but you won't. So <laughs> you stand a much greater risk of blowing yourself up. Um, and it's a five minute job to earth everything in. Definitely worth doing. Okay, with all the wiring done, it's time for these covers to go back on. And then it's all about thinking about how you're actually gonna mount these, how you're gonna use them on a day-to-day -day basis, lighting your setups. Now, what we've elected to do here is show you the cheapest option, uh, which is great for kind of just quick setups at home or in the studio. But if you want something a little bit more advanced, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna have a couple of battens of wood across the back with a couple of handles, actually the kind that you'd use on a, like a gate. Um, 
But what you can do is you can order something called a baby plate with a uh, or a baby plate with a swivel spigot. That's really good. I'll show you one of those in a moment. That's what we use on our LED systems, um, and effectively it's like a three by five steel plate with a spigot on it that will go into a light stand. Um, they're about I don't know what they'd be in dollars, about $30. Um, but I don't have any spare about and they take quite a while to order in. Um, so we're just gonna put handles on the back so people can hold it in shot and, and do lighting setup. Four lights. So now we're just gonna make a support structure for the back so we can pick them up and move them around. Now you'll be getting, you can see there's a lot of flicker kind of going on there at the moment. This is another problem with, um, with fluoros. Yeah, as you stop down, you'll start to see this kind of like a weird flickering going on. Um, that's, well, partly because they flicker just by their very nature, but also because they, they take a little while to warm up, especially the first time you boot them up. So they'll take a little while to go in. Um, but what we're going to do now is we're just going to mount some handles on the back here for easy operation. And there you have it. Two handles and a nice big soft light button. Let's put my bulbs back in. And there you have it. DIY homemade Kino Flow. That you can use to throw soft light in for attractive close-ups. Really quick and dirty DIY soft bank system. Now Works really nicely under some applications, um, and it's great if you're just getting started out with a DSLR video or something on, on those lines, go out and do that, because it's, it's what's that, 100 bucks, um, and you've got a really, really nice soft light system that's lightweight, and it's compact, and it doesn't give off too much heat. If you're looking for something more professional, um, you go down the route that we went down. We actually manufactured a duplicate of this, um, and a much bigger system in LED. The advantage of LED is you don't lose any of this light at the back, of course, you can counter that with reflectors. Ours are much, much brighter. Ours don't make this horrible whining sound that uh, a lot of fluorescents do. They don't have to run off mains power. They don't generate any heat. But the main thing for us is that they are rugged. This is still a very, very fine layer of glass. You knock that, you bash that, and it explodes, and it, you know, it's not nice. Um, you end up with glass everywhere. And we shoot in environments all the time where we don't have access to power, so we can plug ours into a battery and have twice that brightness. But we also work in environments where it rains or where we're underwater or just generally there's a lot of knocks and bashes happening around. So either follow these plans go along or come over to our Kickstarter page where for $50 you can get the full breakdown of exactly how to make something like this in groundbreaking LED. So it's brighter, less power, less heat, more rugged and battery powered. Generally pretty awesome things. But have a go at these, fantastic. and. Uh, Enjoy building your own, just be careful, and make sure you earth it, too. Okay, so that's how you do it, uh, and those lights are currently lighting me now. Uh, so, it works, and, and they're great for certain applications. But bear in mind, with our LED lights, our LED lights are brighter, they are more efficient, they can run off batteries, they are rugged, they are waterproof, they are dimmable, they are just generally far, far superior. Um, they're flicker-free at any shutter speed and just generally very, very cool pieces of kit. So for $50, you can come along to the Kickstarter page, support our current project, The Underwater Realm, and you can make just what you've seen there, but a hundred times better, um, and you can get those plans for a support donation of 50 bucks. So come along, the link is going to be beneath the video if you're on Vimeo or on the website. Um, if you're not on Vimeo and it's been embedded, then there'll be a link coming up round about now.